14 years. That's how long it's been since New Hampshire has had a Republican governor. But Chris Nunu takes over with a Republican majority in the State House, Reps Hall, and in the Senate, not to mention a federal government now controlled by the GOP as well. So will the new governor be able to pass an aggressive agenda in his first term? Let's find out. Governor Sununu, my first guest this morning. Good to see you. Congratulations. Thank you, Josh. Let's Thank start you. with the inauguration speech, though. Off the cuff, no script. Yeah. How did that happen? Uh, you know, I, we had a, went back and forth. If you, I've, I've written two speeches in my whole life and, and tried to read them. It, it, <laughs> it's not me. It doesn't come off well. And, uh, and there was a lot of folks that said, you know, this is an inaugural speech. You really got to put it all down beforehand. And I said, you know, I just want to have a conversation. I really do. It's just how I, I engage with people the best. Um, so I had some notes. Don't get me wrong. I sure. had some notes. Uh, there were some issues I wanted to make sure we, we touched upon. Um, and I wasn't quite sure how it was going to go. But that's just how I roll a little bit. And, and I think that's just uh, the, the way to do it. I was a little nervous about it myself. But I, I thought it came off pretty well. I, I think we hit the points I wanted to hit. And, um, and really, I'm trying to set a tone. Right? And that's the most important thing you can do on the first day of, of anything you do in a business or, or government or, or your first day on the job. Set the tone for what you want. Keep it positive. Keep it energetic. Keep it open, transparent, and make sure people understand the things we talked about on the campaign are the things we're going to keep talking about. Because we have to put substance behind those words. They're not just talking points to get elected. They're the things we really want to achieve for the state. Yeah, and we'll get into some of the topics that you brought up uh, during your address. But you also made a point to say, look, we don't all the ideas don't come out of Concord. We need to get out there and talk to people. Now, when you say that, you're talking to the lawmakers to get out there, talk to their constituents, and, and I mean, how, what does that look like? Really? Yeah, everybody. It's, it's not just myself. It's the lawmakers. It's the com commissioners. It's their deputies. It's the folks in their divisions. If, if we have to keep engaging the individuals or the businesses or the schools or the kids, right, get in there, find out what their needs are. Um, as I said yesterday, I'm a big believer that we have a system of government here, and we're trying to fit the needs of the people into our system so we can ha better serve them. But what we really have to do is find out what those needs are today, because they're very different than what they were 5 or 10 or 20 years ago, and redesign our system to better meet those needs. It's kind of the engineer in sure. me a little bit, but I need to, uh, I'm trying to challenge our state government and, and our officials and, and those who are elected and, and otherwise to, um, to get out there, talk to folks, engage. and then we can engage them and then we can, can build that system around them. And I just think that's how we're going to uh, find the most efficiency. And I go back to the two words I used yesterday, customer service, right? When you're engaging the customer, you're providing them that service and, and you're finding out what their needs are and how best to meet it. A lot of what you talked about centered on New Hampshire's economy. You talked about a uh, 100 uh, companies in 100 days, a recruitment tour trying to get out-of-state businesses to New Hampshire. Have you identified which companies we're talking oh, sure. about? Oh, sure. Yeah, we've already started. Um, and, and as I said, again, I, we talked a little bit about it yesterday. I've met folks from uh, a group from China came to see me, a group from Canada came to see me, Massachusetts, Vermont. We've already started the process. Uh, we have another list we're going through. We're working with the folks over at Economic Development, see what their kind of their low-hanging fruit uh, might be. Um, but it's important. We're not going to get them all on, on day one, we're, uh, but you got to get out there. you got to keep engaging with those businesses and make sure they understand what our message is, not just mine, but the states, where we're going on energy, what we think we can do on health care costs, what we can think we can do with our regulatory uh, framework, which has been a little in, uh, inhibits sure. uh, businesses from coming in. When they know and they hear that directly from the governor, that's the sales pitch, right? A direct sales pitch one-on-one, -on -one, that's always the best way to, um, to to get the results you're looking for. Yeah, to recruit a company, though, I mean, imagine worst case scenario, you get a company to come here and then all of a sudden we don't have a workforce that's ready to fill the jobs that are required. Uh, not to mention the energy costs. I mean, you just sure. touched on that as well. We have sure. some other people expanding out of state because of the high cost of energy here. There's a lot of things that kind of have to happen simultaneously for all this That's to work right. out. Which is why it's not, we're not going to get the immediate results on, on day one. We know that. But um, as, again, what I'm trying to lay the foundation for is long term. We need to think long term. If a business is going to move into the state, it's not just for two or five years. It, they're thinking 10 and 20 years down the road. Right. So we have to be thinking that way. Uh, we're going to have to be patient. But uh, I really see my role as governor as trying to lay the foundation, both in, in style and in substance, um, planning. Um, that's how you're going to build long-term success. And, and again, we're not here for ourselves, right? There's a reason we have two-year cycles here. Uh, a politician's career shouldn't be very long in New Hampshire. It's kind of get in, get something done. Um, but what we have to do is think long-term to build that foundation for our kids, for their kids, um, so that New Hampshire has a real and, and truly viable future. You are very clear with one point yesterday, even though you're talking about the initiatives as far as uh, training the workforce and uh, lowering energy costs, none of it really matters unless we address the uh, number one issue facing the state, substance yeah. abuse and you want to get into those schools early. 
Oh, absolutely. I think it starts in schools. It starts in schools. Aggressive prevention in schools, bringing the parents in. We know the statistics. We can, we, we've done the studies, enough of that. Uh, we know where we have to address the needs. Uh, we have some of the resources. Congress just, uh, U.S. Congress just passed another bill that will provide us some more resources, which is great. So whether you're talking about the recovery uh, on the law enforcement side, prevention side, treatment, all of these have to be robust. And by robust, I mean leave no stone unturned. We have programs out there that, are being very, that have been very successful but that aren't getting our help and, and aren't getting any sort of funding. Let's, let's engage with them. Let's make sure that we're finding what works and, and capitalizing on it. You have James Vera, who has been the straight, state's drug czar. He hates the title, but uh, for, you know, better or for worse, that's what it, people know him by. Uh, do you think that office needs to be expanded to a certain degree? Because I know when you were at the RGA's sure. conference talking about block grants, uh, uh, Governor Pence, uh, Vice sure. President Pence says that's, that's their approach. Give the states some money, let them figure it out. That's a tough job for one guy. It is, and uh, again, it's, it's, it's critical. Jam I'll be meeting with James on my first day on the job this morning, where we have a meeting this morning to discuss it. Um, James, I think, has done a very, very good job, but I think it does need to be a little more robust in that when you look at recovery or, or even on the treatment side, that's a very different job than I think some of the expertise James brings in, which is more on the law enforcement yep. side, the prosecutorial, prosecutorial side when you're dealing with the dealers, right? Addicts and, and this, the issue of abuse is very different than the, the, um, um, the problem you have on the dealer side and, and the prosecutorial side. So maybe by bringing in someone more on the recovery side, because that's really, I think, where we need to really focus our efforts. Um, it, he's done a great job with all that is on his shoulders, sure. but kind of making that team a little more robust uh, and, and really managing a little bit, man, trying to get in there a little bit as governor and find out with the governor's commission, where are the dollars going? Why, you know, what are our possibilities? What are the true resources there? What's working? What isn't? I'm just excited to, to work with James and, and bringing on a team that um, that gets our you know hands right into it to find out where we can get the best results. All right, and don't forget we're taping this on Friday, so he's not actually meeting with the drug czar on Sunday morning when this happens. No, happens, no, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, it's <laughs> Friday. It happens all the time. Um, speaking about dollars, uh, obviously uh, you're going to have to delegate responsibility to some others because your focus is probably on the state budget, I would imagine. Sure. How are the numbers shaking out? Because there's a perception out there that yeah. we have a pretty good cushion. Yeah, um, well, look, the, the state is, I think the, the House and the Senate built a very, very good budget in the last budget cycle, and, and thank goodness that they finally got through uh, uh, su surpassing uh, former Governor Hassan's veto, but um, this hundreds of millions of dollars that we supposedly have to spend, it, that, that is not there. I mean, we know that. We've brought in a great team, uh, really the best and the brightest in the state to find out where we are today. You gotta know where, what our foundation is. Um, my guess is that if we, right now it looks like if we hit our budget uh, for the next six months, we'll end up at the end of June, at the end of the fiscal year, uh, at about a zero balance budget, which is a, a good thing, and putting $70 million into the rainy day fund, not bad. Do we have this $130, $200 million cushion that we've been told we, no. That is not there. Uh, we do have a lot of liabilities and holes that we have to fill. So what we what we know is building for 18 and 19 in that budget cycle. We uh, we have opportunity, but we have to be frugal. There's no doubt about it. The economy's in good shape, but um, we got to make sure that whatever dollars we're spending, they're going to individuals. We know the outcomes we're getting for people, for businesses, for families. That's going to be my focus over this next, next so, budget so, cycle. So some folks might need to lower their expectations, uh, thinking Absolutely. that there's a big pot of money up there. Well, yeah, spend. I mean, the expectations were set with some, some media blitzes back in in September, and I, I don't want to speculate on, on why that was done, but um, the realities are that we just don't have that, that big cushion that, that some folks were talking about. I wish we did. I mean, Lord knows I'd love to have that cushion. I'd love to be able to, you know, do everything that, that, we, that we set out to do. Um, it might just take some, some more time and just reprioritizing. We might have to make some cuts here so we can focus on certain efforts there. DCYF kids, substance abuse, these are real needs for the state of New Hampshire, um, then, and they will get prioritized. Yeah, we, are, we have just about a minute to go, but uh, is, is that primarily your focus? Uh, obviously, there's a lot to do, but right now, are you, is, is uh, one and 1A, the substance abuse and uh, DCYF, things along those lines? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, for me, it's, it's a lot of it is about kids, yeah. right? And, and the substance abuse crisis, as we said, over kind of overtakes everything. The second thing we're doing as part of the, not the budget process, but we have a lot of nominations to make. We have a lot of folks to bring into the state, and that's going to be, that's an exciting opportunity for us, whether they're commissioners or deputy commissioners or, or board members, whatever it is, building my staff. So making sure that we have the opportunity to bring some new people in, right? And it doesn't mean that the, the people that we have now or the people that are kind of terming out of their current terms haven't done a good job, but it's always good to get a fresh set of eyes on things. So that's 
an exciting opportunity as well. Real quick, you're going to get a chance to go skiing sometimes and relax. We've done it. We've done a couple runs. I was up at Cannon uh, a, a few weeks ago. We're going to be up at Brenton Woods in a couple weeks. I did a couple of turns at Waterville. Um, uh, so no, we, yeah, we, we're getting the, the kids and I and, and, and Valerie. We've been getting around the state a little bit. We're going to do some snowmobiling coming up, some cross country skiing. They, you know, we're having a great year with snow. It's great for tourism. It's great for industry for the entire North Country. Now, while you're off and running, best of luck to you moving Thank forward. You, Josh. Congratulations for everything. Thank you, sir. Good to see you.